Hi everyone, welcome to the One Class channel. Today I'm going to be helping you through some chemistry problems. My name is Marlon. I'm a second year student at the University of Waterloo, studying chemical physics with a minor in math. And let's get to it. Okay. So our first question is, what is a half reaction? Why must the number of electrons lost in the oxidation half reaction equal the number of electrons gained in the reduction half reaction? And summarize briefly the steps in the half reaction method for balancing redox reactions. What two items must be balanced in a redox reaction? Okay, so the half reaction method Is an, alg is an algorithm that helps us um, balance out redox reaction. The reason, the reason why we necessarily have to break it down using the half reaction method is to ensure that we, that conservation of mass and energy both occur. And so this means that we want charge to be conserved and we want um, the mass, so the individual species to be conserved. And so the steps is that you break it into the oxidation and reduction, you balance them individually and then you join them back together again. Um, and so first, Write out your half reactions. So your oxidation reaction and your reduction reaction. Step two is going to be that for each half, A, we would like to balance all elements with the exception of hydrogen and oxygen because we'll balance them later because these two involve like OH minus, H2O, and H plus to balance and that involves charge which we're not going to touch yet. Next up we balance O with H2O. And this is in the scenario that we're working in an acidic solution. If we're working in a basic solution, we technically balance O with OH minus, but we'll get to that later. Next up, we balance H. With H plus, and lastly, we balance the charges with electrons. Step three is going to be multiplying equations. So this is only if necessary by a factor in order to ensure that the electrons gained or lost, sorry, in order to ensure that the electrons cancel out basically in both half reactions. because we don't want to see them in the um, overall reaction. And this has to do with, um, yeah. Next up, we will simplify. So you add the two electrons, the two equations back. simplify by canceling anything that appears on both sides of the um, forward reaction sign. And 
And last, you're just going to double check your species, so your mass species. So double check conservation of charge and conservation of mass. Okay, and if we are working in So if we're working in um, if we're working in a basic solution, the rules are a bit different. you're going to do is note down the number of hydrogen ions um, and add an equal amount of OH minus because in a basic solution it's not providing us with hydrogen ions instead it's providing us with hydroxide ions. Um, and yeah, add equal amount of OH on both sides of the equation. And then um, recall that H plus plus OH minus is going to give us H2O. So if you see them together on any one side of the equation, just write down H2O and cancel out any H2Os that will appear on both sides of the um, sign. And that's going to be it. And so if you want to do an example, So we're going to write down the unbalanced um, ionic equation. So we're going to be having a reaction, a redox reaction between iron 2 plus ions in an aqueous solution plus these ions also in an aqueous solution. Give F E 3 plus aqueous plus CR3 plus aqueous. And so we're going to write down our separate equations. So for oxidation, we're going to have Fe2 plus in aqueous solution to Fe3 plus in aqueous solution. And for our redox, sorry, for our reduction reaction, we're going to have an aqueous solution to CR3 plus an aqueous solution. Okay, so in this, because this is oxidized, this is going to be what we call this is our reducing agent. And this is our oxidizing agent because it oxidizes iron and this reduces this. And this becomes our oxidized product and our reduced product. And so um, let's go back to the rules that we have up here to see what we have to do next because it is an algorithm. So it just tells you exactly what you have to follow in order to ensure that the equation ends up balanced. So next, we want to balance all elements except hydrogen and oxygen. So let's see if we have any elements down here to balance. Iron. Um, chromium, we need two of them. So let's do that right now. Let's just put a two. And do we have any elements after that? Nope, no, we're only left with oxygen and we know that we can't balance that yet. Scroll back up here, check, and we balance O with H2O.
Okay, so because we have 7O here, we're going to have plus 7H2O on this side. And because there are now, so we finished with that step, next one we move to balance H with H plus. Okay, so here there is no hydrogen, but here we have now added 14 hydrogens that we will need to balance. And so let's just actually rewrite this. So let's start with the 14 H plus that we knew about. Plus CR2O7 two minus to get CR the plus. And we know that we have multiplied this by two. Um, plus 14 H2. So hydrogen is balanced, oxygen is balanced, and the mass species are balanced. So the next thing that we're going to have to worry about is charge. So let's start with the um, oxidation reaction. And we see that um, the this side has a charge of 2 plus and this side has a charge of 3 plus. And remember, we can only balance with electrons that are negative. So we're going to add one electron here, and we get 2 plus, 2 plus, so that one is fine. On this one, we have a total charge of 12 plus on this side and 6 plus on this side. So what we're actually going to do is add 6 electrons in order to get an equal charge of 6 plus and 6 plus on both sides. So we're just going to have to rewrite that. Remember, we multiplied it by 2 and added 7H2O liquid, aqueous, aqueous. There we go. And so next up, we have the charges balanced, mass species are balanced, and next up, we want the electrons added or removed to be equal. And that means that we will multiply this equation by 6 before we add it to the next one. So let's just write it down here. And so we have 6 Fe to 6 Fe3 plus aqueous plus 6e minus. And so next, we just add these two equations. We know that the six electrons cancel. So that's the first thing that we deal with canceling out. And so let's just write the total equation down here. And we get 14H plus plus Cr2, O7, 2 minus plus 6 Fe2 plus to get 2 Cr 3 plus aqueous plus 6 Fe 3 plus aqueous plus 7 H2O liquid. Okay, and this is going to be our balance equation. Sorry, let me just rewrite that so that it's a bit clearer for you.
And this is our final balanced redox reaction. So let's just do the final step of double checking. And so 14H, 14H. On both sides, six iron, six iron. Oxygen, seven oxygen, seven oxygen. Two chromium, two, two, two chromium. And that's it. Again, charge. 14 plus plus 12 minus 2. So 14 plus 10, that's 24. Here, 6 plus 18, which is 24 too. So we have 24 plus 24 plus. So mass and charge are both conserved when the equation is completely balanced. Um, if we want to continue um, and it's a basic solution instead of an acidic solution, which they will tell you in the question. Um, let's just run through that quickly. And what's going to happen is here you add 14 OH minus. Similarly here, 14 OH minus. This becomes 14 HTO plus 6 Fe2 plus plus Cr2 O7 T minus to 2 Cr3 plus plus 6 Fe3 plus plus 7 H2O plus 14 OH minus. Let's cancel out these H2Os and we get 7 H2O plus 6 Fe2 plus plus Cr207 2 minus 2 Cr3 plus plus 6 Fe3 plus plus 14 OH. So, so you see, all we did was um, instead of having positive on this side, we're going to have negative 14 OH here. And instead of the 7H2 on this side, 7H2 on this side instead. And it's just because of what the solutions are providing us with. So basic provides us with hydroxide ions, and acidic provides us with hydrogen ions. And that's it.